Hi, Kara Gott Warner, editor of Creative Knitting Magazine. And I'm really excited because we just launched the autumn 2014 issue of the magazine. And this also commemorates the 10 year anniversary of Creative Knitting Magazine, which was first published in 2004. And I happen to have the very first issue right here in front of me, which you can see. This is the very first cover of the magazine. So it's really very exciting to um, kind of go through, go back in time, to take a look at some of the projects that were in this issue. And also, the, another exciting thing I have to show you is the first issue of Knitting World, which is actually uh, what Creative Knitting morphed into before it became Creative Knitting. It was Knitting World. And I think what my, my favorite cover line on here is, the first knitting magazine that involves you. <laughs> so that was really kind of cool. 1978, um, yep, 75 cents, pretty cool. So in the current issue, in the autumn 2014 issue, we'll go back in time and we'll talk a little bit about what it was like to make that very first issue. And um, we'll also uh, get to know a little bit about Melissa Liebman, who uh, is, a, is a known designer who was in the very first issue and she still works with Creative Knitting today. In this issue we've got um, some great transitional garments which is always a part of an autumn issue because you know it's still warm out and um, but we also want to get ready for some cooler uh, weather knitting which leads me to what we'll be talking about in this video which is this gorgeous wrap design that's right next to me and it was designed by Nora Gone for Barocco. And you can see these, uh, oh, the, the open work design on this wrap. And it's just very beautiful, kind of undulating open work design. And we're going to go through a little tutorial showing you how to work this gorgeous wrap. But before we do that, I just want to give you a few little tips because I started working on this myself and I discovered a few little things that might trip you up. It's, it's definitely something that once you get in the groove, you're really going to enjoy it. But um, basically, a couple of things to think about. The first one is, this is worked from charts. Um, so this pattern, um, you can see right here, um, this is, this is um, just to show you very quickly, the two charts that are in, in the pattern. In the PDF version of this, um, which you'll be able to get at annie'scatalog.com. They're a little bit bigger and easier to, to uh, work from. And the first section, you'll, you'll start with chart A, but the second tip is when you get to section two, you'll realize that you'll begin working both charts at the same time. So you can see my work here. I have it, um, I use a circular needle. So I have this on, the, on a circular needle, and you can see stitch markers, and that was going to lead me to my next little tip. Um, tip uh, stitch markers are optional, but they're really great because you can see um, the first half of my work is the first chart. The middle section is um, chart B, and the last section is back on chart A again. And I placed markers in, in the middle, um, or actually where I change uh, working on the charts so that I can remember. So, I, you know, I just, one last thing to think about. Um, but when you, when you jump in, when we jump into the tutorial in just a few moments, this will become clear and you'll, you'll understand. So, um, and another thing I wanted to mention is the yarn that is used. It's a great multi-seasonal yarn. It's called Maya and it's from Barocco and it is a 85% Pima cotton and 15% baby alpaca. So you've got the cotton for the breathability because it's still warm. And, um, and then you've got that alpaca for insulation for those, um, those evenings that, you know, during the day maybe it's, it's still a little warm, but it gets a little chillier at night. So that's about it. So let's jump into the tutorial and, you know, keep watching because at the end I'm going to tell you all about this knit along. So let's, let's get going with the tutorial. Hi, this is Emily from Barocco, and today I'm demonstrating Chalk, a beautiful shawl from Nora Gone, Volume 14. You will need to read both the written and charted instructions. There are two charts, Chart A and Chart B. They both use a series of yarn overs, 
knit two togethers, SSKs, and other decreases. To help me read the chart, I draw my key on a large post-it. And when knitting this pattern, I found that I needed to pay extra attention to my knit two togethers and my slip slip knits. We read odd rows of this chart from right to left and the even rows from left to right. Row one is knit two, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit two. Row one, I knit two, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit two. Row two, we purl all the way across the row. Row five, we begin using our decreases. Knit two, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip, slip, knit two together, yarn over, knit two. Row six, we need to pay attention because we're no longer just purling on the wrong side. Purl two, knit one, purl one, two, three, four, five, knit one, purl two. Row seven, pay attention because you're no longer just knitting on the right side row. Knit two, then yarn over, making sure you wrap all the way around. Purl one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, Yarn over, slip, slip, knit two together. Purl one, yarn over, and knit two. Let's knit along until row 13. Row 13 is where you need to begin to pay attention to your knit two togethers and your SSKs. So I'm going to knit two. Yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, purl one, purl two, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, Purl one, purl two, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one, knit two. Paying attention to your knits, purls, slip slip knits, and knit two togethers, let's knit until the very last row of chart A, row 34. On row 34, make sure to look back to your written instructions. It tells you to increase by purling one and knitting one into the first yarn over of, of your row and the last yarn over of your row. I purl two and here's my first yarn over. So I'm going to purl one, leaving my stitch on my needle bring yarn to the back and knit one. Continue to knit your row until the last yarn over. Here's my last yarn over so I'm going to purl one and then leaving this stitch on my needle bring yarn to back, knit one, we'll let the stitch drop and then purl two. Section two, continue in pattern Knit two, 
place a marker, knit the first row of chart A, place a marker, knit the first row of chart B, place a marker, knit the first row of chart A, again, place a marker, and then knit two. Here is how my knitting looks with my markers in place after my first row. Row 11 of section 2, make sure to see this new symbol that we have. That symbol is knit 3 together and the next symbol here is slip, 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 knit. So you're slipping 3 stitches and knitting them all together. So just be aware in chart B when you're knit two togethers and SSKs swap with a knit three together and an SSSK. Pay attention and make sure you read both your written and charted instructions. And then that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. Well, I hope you liked that quick little tutorial. So I don't want to keep you waiting any longer. So here are the details for the knit along, and this is what you have to do. Just hop on over to anniescatalog.com and type in chalk in the search box. So that's C-H-O-C-K, and that's the name of the pattern that is right here beside me. And then hit the little go button, and then you'll come to the product page. So you'll get, be able to download the PDF, at that point. And then right below that you'll see all the different colors of Maya. So you can pick your yarn right there on the same page. And then when you're done, head on over to Ravelry so you can join the Barocco Lovers fans group. And you can uh, introduce yourself and get to know other knitters and just, you know, have fun. And, um, and then after that, you know, Check out and explore creativeknittingmagazine.com because the current issue is live on the site. And if you want to see any special tutorials, you can leave me an email at editor at creativeknittingmagazine.com because I'd love to hear from you. And you can visit splendidsticks.com, which is my editor's blog. So I'm always uh, creating tutorials, and there's so many different features going on, so please stop by. You can also get there by typing in creativeknittingmagazine.com backslash blog. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.